Gus Fring is one of the most iconic villains in TV history, with his monster methamphetamine empire run under the front of Los Poyos Hermanos, a local favorite. In Breaking Bad, Jesse would reveal that Gus could be pulling upwards of $96 million in revenue over a 3 month period. But this was after decades of growth and only lasted a few months. So how much money did Gus Fring make over his entire career? Well, starting off, let's take a look at his legal business, Los Poyos Hermanos. Similar businesses generally pull in a few million dollars in revenue per store per year. For example, KFC has hovered in the 900s for much of the past 15 years. Chick-fil-A, on the other hand, rakes in over $4 million per store annually. One of the main reasons that KFC has significantly low revenue numbers is that KFC, like many other fast food chains, has overextended, leading to more restaurants with lower revenue per restaurant. Given that Los Poyos Hermanos is an up-and-coming brand that has been quickly expanding up to 14 stores, it is safe to assume that they are generating $1 to $2 million in revenue annually per store. Let's just say $1 million each to be conservative, which would mean $14 million in revenue from Los Poyos Hermanos. Gus has been in the business for about 20 years, and let's assume that the majority of the profits made in the first 15 years were reinvested into the business, adding locations, trucks, marketing, and so on and so forth. As a result, we will say that Los Poyos Hermanos has been a stable regional chain for about 5 years. The average restaurant profit margin is 3-5%, so, assuming a 4% profit margin, Los Poyos Hermanos would have generated $560,000 in profits per year or $2.8 million over 5 years. And we can use this figure to estimate the total valuation of the business including all of its assets. During this time period, the average PE ratio for restaurant chains was about 10 to 15. This is based on the PE ratio of young brands during the time period who owns a variety of restaurants including KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. The PE ratio or price to earnings ratio is just a ratio between a company's yearly earnings and its valuation. As Los Poyos Hermanos makes $560,000 in profits per year, with a PE ratio of 12.5, Los Poyos Hermanos could be worth $7 million. But this is not all Gus's. It is clear that Madrigal has some sort of significant ownership in Los Poyos Hermanos. Some people suggest that it is the parent company, while others insist that Gus is still a majority owner. So we'll just say that Gus and Madrigal are 50-50 owners. Given all of this, over Gus's career, Los Poyos Hermanos has given him $3.5 million in net worth and about $1.4 million in income or about $5 million in total. Moving on, let's take a look at his drug empire, most of which was with the cartel. Badger tells Jesse that street grade meth has a market price of about $1,700 per ounce or about $27,200 per pound. When Walter was cooking for Gus, we know that Gus was moving 200 pounds per week, but this was after Gus took over Hector Salamanca's territory. So originally, when he was working under Don Bolsa, let's say that he was handling on average 100 pounds per week. First of all, out of his revenue, Gus would have to pay the cartel who handles the production of the substance. Let's say their cut is 30%. Next, we have the mules working across Gus's distribution network getting the products to the dealers. Mike reveals that their pay is 20%. Let's also say that the dealer's cut is 20%. Finally, let's say Mike and Gus's other right hand men get 10%. This sounds low, but you have to remember that the 10% is split among just a handful of people as opposed to the 20 or 30% which is split between hundreds of people. This finally leaves Gus with 20% of the revenue. This makes sense as you would assume the cartel makes the largest portion followed up by Gus who is taking on the risk of the distribution network. So with 100 pounds per week, Gus would have been making $544,000 per week or about $2.2 million per month and $28 million per year. With 20 years in the business, this would add up to $565 million. We know that Gus lived well below his means, driving an old Volvo and owning a modest house. We can assume that his living expenses were well under his Los Poyos Hermanos income, so all of this drug money was just pure net worth. Let's just take off another $65 million or about 11% as unexpected issues. Maybe they had production issues or they had to scale back for a little bit. Anyways, before Walter and the lab, 
Gus had made at least $500 million from the drug trade. The math is pretty much the same after Walt enters with just a few differences. Gus no longer has to pay the cartel 30% as he has his own production means. He now also controls Hector's territory leading to 200 pounds per week and the meth itself now sells for $2,500 per ounce. Instead of the cartel, Gus has to pay Lydia and Chow 20% for the chemicals and Walter and Jesse $1 million per month. The amount he pays Walter and Jesse works out to about 3.9% even with the upgraded $15 million a year. Let's just call them 5%. And then of course, there is the cost of the lab, which is estimated to be $8 million, but let's just call it 10. However, that's just a one-time cost, so overall, Gus's profit margin increases to about 25%. So Gus isn't really making all that much more in terms of percent compared to when he was working with the cartel. But the key difference is that he now has full control and has a higher market price. Given that this setup continues for about 6 months, Gus would roughly make $52 million over that time period. So at the time of Gus's death, he was making about $100 million per year. But as he dies, he only gets to about $50 million minus a $10 million lab cost. This means that Gus conservatively made a total of $540 million from his empire. Combined with Los Poyos Hermanos, Gus was worth about $545 million at the time of his death. But that's just conservative. Gus may have been peddling 200 pounds the entire time, and his restaurant chain may very well be worth double what we originally estimated. So Gus could be worth up to $1.05 billion. The real number however was probably right in the middle at $795 million, or about $800 million plus or minus $100 million. So unfortunately, Gus likely never reached a billion dollar mark in terms of net worth but his drug business would have been worth $1 to $2 billion given his yearly income. However, you can't really sell this business to Apple or Google given the nature of the business, so that figure is basically meaningless and wouldn't add on to his net worth. But hey, Gus did run a unicorn meth empire. However, as Jesse said, is a meth empire really something to be that proud of? And given that Gus lived so modestly, maybe he should have just stuck to Los Pueyos Hermanos as he would have lived a much longer life and wouldn't have worked so hard just to end up giving it all to Uncle Sam. Anyways, if you guys thought this video provided an in-depth analysis of Gus's income and net worth, then make sure to drop a like. And consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.